Glory okay. Um, Mungia Dervachenko. I think this is a fight we finally get to determine like how good Mungia is. Okay. Um, this is like the true like can you pass the eye test fight? Yes. Um, Dervachenko even said like this might be his last big fight, so things are gonna come out swinging Strong. hard here. And he arguably has beaten some really top guys, and he's just been so close on decisions from so close. from being in even bigger fights. It sucks. And for uh, Jaime Mungia, we're like he's so close to just giving us like yes, we'll accept you. And you know, Oscar's then, like, please, please, please accept him. Ryan just lost. You might be my last fucking hope. hope. Right. Okay. Especially all the drama online with him. Because, like, o- honestly, yeah. Um, Virgil yeah. Ortiz. Stop, Gary. Verge. Stop. Love Virgil. Ver- love him to death. Love okay? Virg. Even if he's healthy, he is never going to be a draw. And I think the w- both Crawford and and Spence are leaving the division after the, after their fights. Yeah. I don't think they're staying at 147. No, they're too old. I don't see it. Move it or lose so, it. They got a rematch see. clause. You think they stay for the rematch? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they stay for their fights. And then so their two fights, and then definitely the winner moves up. Did you see the merch for um, Craw- um Spence? No. It's called Smoking on the Bud Tour. <laughs> Bro. That's a good one. That's a good one. I want it. But the shirt's $64. That's too much. Too much. Right? Too much. For a t-shirt? $64. Y- y'all is crazy. $64 for a t-shirt? Yeah. No. Yeah, no, I'm out. But it's cute. Smoking on Bud Tour. That's a cute little slogan. We probably it. just like copy the logo and just make our own shirts for cheap. Just saying. I actually already thought of that idea. I'm so. just saying. I'm not saying we do that. Just Spence, saying. For legal purposes, I'm saying other people could do that. But if we wanted to dress, you know, team people Spence like us point, could do that. We'll allegedly, look cool. We'll look cool. And I can um, sell them too. And then you could try to sue some guy selling T-shirts out of the back of his of his, of his truck, I mean, right? I mean, you could try to do that. Just saying that could happen. Allegedly, come um, and get me. I'm, I'm, I'm picking Devrachenko in this fight. I'll be honest. Uh, Munguia has never really impressed me. I think he's feasted on subpar competition his entire career. Um, and even this opponent is one that's, in a sense, cherry-picked. Like, Devrachenko is a guy that's smaller than him. He's a guy that's not going to be a better boxer than him, potentially. You know what I mean? Well, like, look at their records. Yeah, I mean, Munguia is 41-0. and 0. That's crazy. And uh, Devrachenko is 14 and 4. Yeah. And Devrachenko is the way more experienced fighter. Like leagues above in terms of experience. We're trying, to, we're trying to get him in this club that where we accept him. And he's 41 and 0. And the only fight that I was happy was Gabriel Sato. That's still his best opponent is Gabe Rosado. Not Dennis Hogan. Liam Smith, maybe. Because <laughs> Liam Smith is actually a former champion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Tom <clears throat> Ali is still in his top five wins. That's bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm picking Devrachenko here. I think he's going to surprise us. I think he's going to hurt Munguia. Um, I think Munguia is hiding some shit, hiding some flaws. And I mean, he's just been, we've been waiting for someone to expose those flaws. And we've seen him in parts, you know, with like the Dennis Hogan fight. He looked like shit. The <laughs> Takasha Inoue fight, he looked like shit. You know, there's been certain fights he hasn't looked good. This is the fight where I think all of those are going to add up and he will finally lose. And Oscar is really going to go off the deep end here. It's going to be great to it's watch, guys. Good, yeah. Um, thoughts, Melody? I uh, can't wait for it. Oscar seems like he's on the downward spiral yeah. already. It's going to be fun. Um, fun social yeah, media good, time. Good, good stuff. And I'm, I'm, I pick Munguia. I know. Sorry, Mexican bro. Gary, I'm going to take Munguia. Um, I don't really understand what they're doing with Munguia. So Munguia won a belt at 54, and then he's been at. 160 since 2020, and he's fought like six times. He's never fought anyone decent. And then he just skips 160 and goes to 168. I don't understand what they're doing. I don't understand their trajectory. If I pick him to win the fight. I, I think Devin Chanko is old and washed at this point. I think Munguia will get him out in a competitive fight. I think it'll be competitive, and then eventually Munguia will get him out. Um, so I'm going to take Munguia in a less than spectacular performance against an aging guy. Um but I don't understand, like, why did they never take a fight of note at 160? Right? It, it wasn't like when Mosley skipped 140 to go fight at 147. He's going to 68 to fight Derevchenko. Why didn't he fight anyone good at 160? The best or just, big or just fight Or just fight Derevchenko at 160. I bet Derevchenko could do that. I mean, Derevchenko is a lifelong 68 guy. As long as no, I he's remember. not. 
He fought Jacobs. He fought who did he fight? That's all at 160. That was at 68. Yeah. Wait, was that 60? Yes. You're right. You're right. You're right, Matt. You're right, Matt. I'm off my game today. You're right, Matt. Yo, why did you just fight Devin Jacob? You're right, Matt. You're right. And Triple G, you're right. Oh, Charlo, you're right. Gary wants to know what's the reason. The reason is Oscar de la Hoya. Yeah, he's one of the worst That's promoters the ever. <laughs> what is the reason? And it sucks because, Cardi like, B. I'm always like in in favor of fighters Oscar. like owning their shit. And Oscar is one of the first fighters to really own his shit in a sense. Right. But dude's just not mentally well, man, and it's sad. And we also know that R Roberto Diaz, recent matchmaker for yeah, Golden Boy, is also know. outed. He's not. He's no longer with the company. So who knows where the ship is sailing right now? Who's steering the ship? Yeah. Like, is it is it Eric Gomez? Because most of the time we always knew when Oscar's going on a bender, Eric Gomez comes in and he's running the ship. Him and Diaz. But even Eric Gomez has seen has seen MIA right. in the last few years. Right. Like Eric Gomez does not seem like he's out there like he once was raw raw for the company he's taking a step back it seems i think largely due to oscar but anyways guys any other thoughts about mungia devrachenko the card itself okay moving on <laughs> <laughs>